Thank you all for your patience um, for our delayed start. We will now begin with the pledge. We'll now begin with comments from Superintendent Moore. Good evening. Every day, members of the Wake County business community share their time and expertise to give our students invaluable hands-on experience. Companies provide job shadowing, internship opportunities, send representatives to career fairs all over the district, and serve on career advisory boards at our college and career academies. Core belief number six of our Vision 2020 strategic plan states that Wake County residents value a strong public school system and will partner to provide and support and resource fully to and provide the support and resources to fully realize our shared vision, accomplish the mission, and sustain our core beliefs. These partnerships aren't just nice to have, but they are in fact essential to fully realize our shared vision and accomplish our mission. That's why I was pleased to join with many of you last week to honor just a few of the businesses and organizations that volunteer their time to support our students and teachers. More than 450 people attended the School to Career Volunteer Celebration. We honored the following with Outstanding Volunteer Leadership Awards. Wake County Economic Development, Brassfield and Gorey, Baker Roofing, Wake Med, IBM, the Town of Garner, Optum United Healthcare, Professional Assessment Rider, Edwards Inc., Seroptimus International of Raleigh, Knowledge Works Foundation, and Chick fil A. I thank them and all of our partner businesses and organizations for their ongoing support. I'm also happy to announce that we are once again teaming up with the Carolina Hurricanes for Readvolution. Or is that red volution? I'll say read volution. Just playing on words there. Um, elementary literacy and the Power Play Middle School Fitness Initiatives. With read volution from September 24th until November 16th, elementary school students are encouraged to read at least 20 minutes a day and to log their minutes online. Students who achieve the goal of reading an average of 20 minutes a day, a total of 800 minutes, will receive two complimentary ticket vouchers to a Hurricanes game. Schools will also engage in a little friendly competition. Any school logging at least 2,020 books will be entered into a drawing to attend a cool school field trip at PNC Arena to participate in fun activities, get a visit from the Canes players. Last year, our elementary school students read a total of 258,320 books, and 51 schools met or exceeded their 2020 book benchmark. The Power Play program is a daily 60-minute exercise program broken into three periods. The periods focus on strength, cardio movement, and free play. Students who complete at least 20 hours of total exercise over the six week long program, which started this week and ends November 9th, will also receive complimentary tickets to a Hurricanes game. Parents can contact their child's teachers to learn more about how to participate. We are grateful to the Canes for their support of our students and we wish them the best this season. Lastly tonight, I'd like to invite juniors, seniors, and their parents to attend the Wake County College Fair this Sunday from 2 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. at NC State's McKimmon Center. More than 100 colleges will be represented. There will also be information sessions about financial aid and how to make sure students are fully prepared for college. This is an excellent opportunity for our students to start planning for and realizing the dreams of their futures. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> October is a, a 
month where where we have um, several recognitions and awareness. Um, most people are familiar that October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Um, we also, as a school district, kicked off Bullying and Prevention Month. Um, and in addition, we have a resolution um, from the State for Disability History and Awareness Month, which reads, whereas there are more than 20,000 students with disabilities in Wake County Public School System, and whereas the Americans with Disability Act of 1990 is founded on four principles, inclusion, full participation, economic self-sufficiency, and equality of opportunity for all people with disabilities, and whereas the General Assembly of North Carolina designated October of each year as Disability History and Awareness Month in North Carolina, and whereas in 2007 the General Assembly of North Carolina amended GS. Dot 115C-81 titled Disability History and Awareness, and whereas amending the act was designated to increase public awareness and respect for people with disabilities and to ensure future generations understand that disability is a natural part of life and that people with disabilities have a right to be treated as individuals above all else. Now, therefore, the Wake County Board of Education does hereby resolve that our schools shall provide intensive instruction on disability history, people with disabilities, and the disability rights movement during the month of October, but also periodically throughout the school year. And school board members, I am to let you know that your T-shirts are at your um, seat and they are to be um, worn or displayed at our next board me meeting. Oh, and it's a V-neck. That's nice. You all know. Somebody knows I don't really wear T-shirts, so that's great to have a V-neck. Um, but, and I'd also, of course, <laughs> and I'd also... Uh, and I, I know. <laughs> I have nice t-shirts. <laughs> um, and I also like to thank um, Karen Hamilton and her staff for all the work that they do. Um, providing these services um, are vital to our community in Wake County. Um, clearly um, is exceptional in terms of the number of students who families who tell us that they move here for our services so thank you to all of our folks who are committed um, and I'll be the first to say my first tip for disability awareness month is to use people first language which this resolution does which reminds you to put the person before you name the disability um, so it's people with disabilities and not people who are dis not disabled people so that's my disability awareness tip for the month um, Likewise, um, I'd be remiss if I did not note the beautiful bouquet of pink flowers. And thank you, Melissa, and the administrative team who um, ensured that we had um, some recognition of Ms. Hartenstein. Um, we chose pink because she actually wore a lot of flowers and a lot of pink dresses. In my memory, Melissa and I were, were speaking of today. Um, and so I think it's important that... Um, as many of you have heard um, our comments. Most of you have definitely heard me, and I still feel kind of emotional now bringing it back up today. Um, but I want to actually personally thank those of you in District 7 who absolutely understand that all eight of us are committed to serving the entire district as we are all um, installed to do so. And that, I hope you recognize, has not gone unnoticed or unanswered um, during this time. And we will continue to work as a full board to acknowledge those as we move throughout the next few weeks and I appreciate you allowing us this time um, um, as we both grieve but also celebrate um, the legacy she left and I think it's important to again remind people that um, she um, Greg Ford said it best the Kathy Twinkle um, and her laughter will forever be in our memory and I think she'd want me to remind you all to live your lives fully and remember to celebrate all the goodness that life has to offer um, and again thank you all for your support and allowing us this time Dr. Martin thank you just briefly I'll note that uh, yeah the last couple weeks have been quite a roller coaster um, uh, I don't think any of us are, are have completely come to terms with Kathy's untimely passing. Uh, I will miss her smile. I will miss her joy. I will miss her enthusiasm for every student, uh, for every school. Um, and I will deeply miss her contribution on policy committee, uh, where she served as vice chair. Uh, her experience as a, as a principal was invaluable as we read policy. As we worked on policy, uh, uh, her shoes will be very difficult to fill. She will be deeply missed. It was an honor to know and work with her. Uh, I also had the privilege of being there to, for the ribbon cutting for Apex Friendship Middle School. We talk a lot about opening schools. Uh, 
uh, and uh, it's wonderful to see a very successful uh, opening again. Uh, it was two things that really struck my mind listening to the student speakers in particular is one student uh, talking about how even just in these first months of school, he is just absolutely uh, digging into the open collaborative spaces. Uh, it creates opportunities for him to learn that he was not able to uh, achieve in the standard classroom setting. Uh, talking with the architect, she said, boy, we just needed to, to, to tape that kid because the, the child was making all of the arguments that the designers and architects would make, uh, uh, showing how important those spaces are. Learning does not work usually very well when constrained to seats in rows. Uh, and uh, the other thing that struck in my head, or stuck in my head, was uh, one student who um, was adamantly opposed to coming to this new school, leaving her home school, and now she is glad that her parents made that happen because the opportunities at the new school are so much richer than she ever could have imagined, uh, and uh, uh, she was enthusiastically becoming part of the opening of this uh, wonderful new school. Um, and it's also important uh, to, to recognize the history of the area. The area of friendship, I, I think, is the embodiment of what public and public education means. Uh, the town of friendship, the region of friendship, uh, uh, came to be uh, at a Native American powwow where the Native, Native Americans freed slaves and local rural low-income whites decided to live together because as a community they could be so much more than anyone could be as an individual. And that's exactly what we're all about in public education. We are so much stronger as a community than any of us is as an individual. Um, oh, and by the way, the individual benefits as a wonderful side benefit of that process. So congratulations, Chargers. Glad to see your school open. Thank you. Good evening. Mm -hmm. It has been um, a roller coaster two weeks. We will um, miss Kathy as a colleague on the board, but I also um, grieve for the principal community in Wake County that um, she was such an intricate part of for so long. So I just hold your our Wake County principals in your heart um, in the coming months. It's been a very difficult start of the school year for them. Um, but also appreciate celebrating the inclusion that comes with Disability Awareness Month. I'm so proud of the school district's focus every October on um, our students with disabilities because they have so many possibilities and um, I think that's been such a great theme in the years as we look at um, October and with anti-bullying month I think it's a great thing for us to keep in mind as we um, continue in this school year and I wanted to thank the parents who are um, giving us feedback on Envision in the in the parent porthole as well as um, here at the board meetings as and the other um, community meetings that we are having this is a difficult process and we as board members have a lot to, to um, continue to con consider not just proximity and stability and utilization but student achievement and the use of resources in the school districts so and know that we are listening and we have a lot of um, various factors that we have to consider and weave together into a proposal so thank you for the input good evening uh, I see everyone here tonight that wants to discuss a uh, student assignment and it's a sorry thing that this is a ongoing every year item. And the reason for that is we just don't have enough seats. Now in having, not having enough seats, I've also sat here and said I will not support the upcoming bond. And that's because I believe that the Wake County school system has not made providing seats for all of you folks the number one priority. If we look currently at what is on the slate to be done for construction work, you will see hundreds of millions of dollars being spent within Raleigh to add just a few seats to existing school facilities. While where you people live, where the growth is, and we hear that growth is supposed to pay for itself, but if we're spending the money in Raleigh, it's not paying for the schools that you need where you live. And that's what I truly believe. We hear all this about uh, collaborative spaces and these great environments, but 
if we have a 15% deficit of seats and it's a continuing thing and has been that way for 20 years, there's a problem. If we keep doing the same thing, you're going to keep getting the same thing. And so the only day that you are really listened to is that certain day in November and this year with the bond there, if you want to be heard, there's your opportunity. Um, Ms. Mahaffey. This week has um, made us appreciate our custodians a little more, being Custodian Appreciation Week, and I just want to take a moment to thank all of them. They are many times the unsung heroes of the school um, and always doing things that, you know, I, I know at my daughter's previous school, they would be excited when gotchas would get left behind for clean desk spaces and really bring a lot to our community. Um, and so it's exciting to see all of the schools and the ways that they're celebrating their community and recognizing that a school is more than just the people in the classroom, but it's the building, um, the pe people in the building. Um, I'd like to thank those of you who came to the public meeting last night um, regarding high school assignment. I'd like to thank um, Area Superintendent Dr. Mark Savage and Head of High School Programs um, Drew Cook for coming and talking about what it looks like opening a new school, what are the changes, what's to be expected, what are the unknowns. I learned that the first two people that you hire are usually the athletic director and the band director. Um, and it was a well-attended meeting with some potential future Green Level High School students, and thanks to Apex Assistant Principal Rodney Smith for giving them a sneak peek of the facility, going to the new media center, a couple classrooms, the gymnasium, and a lot of delight in seeing the band room with the door that opens up so they can just go right outside. Um, as Dr. Martin mentioned, the Apex Friendship Middle School Chargers had their ribbon cutting ceremony. Um, they definitely charged into a new school with the eighth grade band, the cheerleading team, and Prince Apex Friendship High School, Matt White, who rode in on a horse dressed as a patriot to deliver the ribbon cutting scissors. Um, in touring the school, we heard from teachers on how this flexible seating and access to collaborative spaces have helped enhance their lessons. This is an example of a building where the academics are informing the architecture and not the other way around. Um, and just in closing, I, there's a big empty space next to me and she will be missed greatly. Um, still trying to find words. Um, I want to talk a little bit about Cassie, but before that I do want to talk about Friday night. Um, Ms. Ms. Johnson Hostler and I went to a homecoming game at, at Millbrook High School and um, I think we had a great time, don't you? We had a we had a really good time. Uh, I had my granddaughter there, who is attached to Miss Johnson Miss uh, Johnson Hostler, very close. She she left me in the dust, and um, those two were all over the place. So. Um, Riding in the in the convertible, Mary White got to do that, and she got to cheer with the cheerleaders. And um, yeah, she she got moves from this chair here, and <laughs> they had a good night. So that was a great time. Um, the custodians uh, love custodians. I uh, I took lots of bags of chocolates out for different PTAs to give to the custodians, but I didn't eat any myself. So I'm extremely proud of me. And um, I do want to talk a little bit about, about Kathy a minute, if that's okay. Um, I'm going to try to do this. Um, so first of all, I have a lot of little notes here. I've been thinking about Kathy, and she's going to. She would say to me. You know, I need to get my house in order. And because notes would not have been her style, she would have put things in a little order, but that's not my style, as Jonathan's going to tell everybody. Um, but, but what I want to say about my friend Kathy and our colleague is that driving here today, um, I thought, and all week I've been thinking about what, how different life's going to be now without her. 
Um, Cassie was a positive force. Um, she was certainly approached things in life really in a positive way. And I think you've heard me say that um, I'm always the glass is half empty, and she was always the glass is half full. And I'd say to her, well, so what does that mean? She says, well, between the two of us, we probably have a full glass. And so that's what I would go with all the time. Cassie and I had similar lives. Um, both I knew her in the past, and I knew her in the present. She had my children in her class. She was a great teacher, Odyssey of the Mind person. I'd just known her for a long time. Um, we spent a lot of time together. We talked almost every day. And it was like today when I was driving here, I, I thought about texting her because I thought, I'm going to be late again which is true. And I'd always say, it w here's how it would usually go. It would go, I'd, I'd call her or I'd text her and I'd say, I'm going to be late. Can you tell the board I'm going to be late? And she'd, we'd be on the phone and I'd say, please tell them I'm going to be late. And I'd be worried and, and I'd say, she'd say, yeah, yeah, I'll tell them you're going to be late. And she'd say, and I'd say, well, where are you? And she says, oh, I'm going to be late. <laughs> and so I, she would not be the worried person. I'd be the worried. Um, but so... In my professional life, I, I'm very orderly normally, and I, even in the board, I try to be orderly in a random sort of way. Um, but there, there's this card that I have that I've had for years. It's my kind of my personal business card because I do some things out of, out of here in my other life a little bit too besides working at a hospital. But the name of my business is in no particular order. I've had these cards for a long time, which is how I live my life in no real particular order. I, If somebody wants me to do something, I'll just do it. Um, it. My pictures are in no order. I know usually which child it is. I have no idea what year it was. Um, so the thing about Cassie was that she had order in her life. She would bring things to order very often. She, she and I led, like I said, similar lives, but she had an order to her life. Like when we would be on trips or going out after the board, she'd say, where would you like to go? And other board members know this. And we'd, I'd say, I'd just look at her with a blank look because that was pretty much me because I knew she'd figure out what we would do next. So I will miss that direction. Um, jo Jonathan mentioned this the other day that I'm kind of like, I'll just say it like it is in a roundabout way. That's not, that's, that's ironic. In a good way. Okay, thank you. <laughs> And Cassie would have a more thoughtful process of just kind of thinking it over. And sometimes I would try to convince her of my way. And I'd be talking to her and talking to her about my way. And, and she'd just look at me and she'll say, OK, so we'll just disagree about that. And then she'd walk away. So I'll miss that. We, she would not argue with me, but she would just say, we're going to disagree about that. So. I would often use Cassie as an excuse. I would say, um, Cassie made me do it. And I could do that because um, you've heard me say that. Yeah, uh, I don't know who I'm going to use in my life. I've always wanted somebody in my life that I could blame for me doing something. And so, yeah, it'll, Mr. Sutton is my new, Mr. Sutton made me do it. Um, and because I got to use somebody, so I think it's good. It's got to be somebody that I can respect. <laughs> <laughs> um, so she, st she made me feel complete both professionally and personally, and I'm going to miss that completeness. Um, we all on this board, we lean on each other, and I think you can see this in the board. We are a tight-knit group because we all bring different things, different talents to the table, and what Cassie Hardestine brought to the table was a major great strengths in academics and classroom leadership, compassion for children that is just second to none. Um, she loved to tell people stories, and she just had so much compassion. I remember as she was driving the last time I talked to her to go get some health care, she said, well, who's going to call my parents? You know, if somebody needs to get back with my parents, I do not want them to think that I'm not thinking about them. I have to say one thing. Um, Cassie and I were in similar stages of life. Um, I was always looking back, and Cassie's always looking forward. And so 
what she did for me one time was she gave me this book, and probably many of you read it. I don't know. But it's a great book. It's called Finishing Well. Um, and I'm going to read just a couple things that she would say. It's, it's about looking forward and not looking back because she was trying to mentor me. Um, one of the things I want to say about Kathy, and every chapter in this book, if you ever get a chance to look at it, is titled with her. Um, there's a sentence that you start with in this book that says, would you like the world to be a better place for you having been there? Everybody in this room will say yes. The thing is, then you ask them, what, what are you going to do to make it better? And they're usually just saying, well, something, but we don't have a plan. Kathy had a plan. Um, she knew that we were living longer, people were living longer, and that now life is, there's a life one and a life two. And in between life one and life two is, is called half time. And oftentimes, there's another book about that, but oftentimes we get caught in our half time. And we just couldn't get out of that half time unless we have a strategy to go to life number two. Or if we had a role model to teach us, and she was my role model on that. She would refer me many times to this book, and she'd say that if you're retired, which I've done several times, but I keep going back to work because I don't know what to do next. She'd say, if you're retired, then you've got to do something. You don't just die. You don't retire and die. She'd say, what comes next? You can make the best of your life by doing the best for other people. So as I look back at the chapters, I just want to say this. Um, Chapter one of this book is called Let's Do Lunch. And if you knew Kathy, besides her Kathy chats, the first thing she would do would say, well, let's do lunch. If she just met you for the first time, let's do lunch. Let's go out. Let's talk about it. And um, I tried really hard not to read this book because it's just so positive. Um, so, <laughs> so I tried so hard not to, but she would actually, many times when we were talking, she would say to me, so wait a minute, did you read that book? What have you learned? And I'd have to go back and she'd quiz me a little bit on this book. So when I think of Cassie, and I did read it this last week again, and every chapter is about Cassie Hardenstein in this book. So I just wanted to say that about Cassie today. Um, she was about finishing well. And um, she had, she has done that. She's finished well. And the pink flowers are there to help us remember, but it won't take anything in the future for us to remember what Cassie's done for us. Uh, I'll just make a couple of small comments. I, I, there is a gap in our board, uh, Miss Kathy. Uh, I didn't have the personal relationship like uh, Roxy just shared, uh, but more of a professional one. And um, it was very interesting because she always came to a conversation with an open and inquisitive mind, uh, recognizing that even though she'd been in education for 35 years, she didn't have all the answers because she may not fully understand what the current question is. And I appreciated that about her. I hope I have the same approach when I meet with people. Um, I would say this, the, the uh, superintendent's leadership breakfast last week was to celebrate the wonderful connections we have with the business community to support our students in career and technical educational opportunities. And you're seeing the students involved in those programs uh, become uh, more numerous in all of our high schools and most of our middle schools. You're seeing programs for career technical education opportunities expand. Um, and uh, last summer, we had our first early signing of career technical education graduates. And we expect to see more of that. Uh, so it's the folks who are saying, well, we've got jobs we don't have people for. We're developing um, the career technical skills and the, the, the issue is, and we hear a lot of things in the media about, well, the, the jobs that we're going to graduate young people to take within five years, they're going to change. So we don't really know today what the occupation might be for students that we're graduating. What we do know is that we have to equip them with the skill sets 
so that they can adapt to how the industry that they choose to go in to uh, changes over time. Uh, I think we're doing a good job with that and look forward to continuing and expand opportunities for young people in the career technical field. In terms of the upcoming bond issue, I'd like to disagree with my colleague over there. Um, the, the issue is not whether we're going to build schools in Wake County. The issue is how we can borrow money at the cheapest rate. Uh, we have a seven-year plan that the county commission has approved, that we have approved. It can be changed every year, but right now that, that it's set in what it is. It's a combination of new construction and necessary renovations. And the issue before the public in November will be, will you continue to ask the county to build schools at, at something more than what the cheapest interest rate would be? Authorizing the sale of general obligation bonds will take our cost of debt down and allow the county to borrow money at the cheapest rate the market will allow. That's what the issue is before the public in November relative to the bond referendum. I would encourage you to choose to support it. And that's my comments for tonight. Thank you, everyone. We'll now move to the approval of the agenda. Motion to approve tonight's agenda. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please note by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed, same sign. A motion carries. For public comment, citizens who sign up to address the board during public comment will be called on in priority order, first for items on the agenda and then for items not on the agenda. Each individual speaker will be allowed three minutes for remarks. Specific personnel or student matters are not appropriate for this public comment setting, but may be addressed through applicable WCPSS personnel, the grievance policy, or other applicable policies. Based on my list, we do not have any on-topic speakers this evening. And so there are 32 speakers because I think there's one repeat from my quick run through this. Um, so I'm going to call three at a time. Um, and I don't have any repeat first names, so I'm going to call first names to try to expedite us. Um, I will ask, generally I do oftentimes extend um, a point of privilege, but this evening I'm going to ask when the buzzer buzz that that's the end of your three minutes so that we can move throughout and ensure that every speaker has their equitable time allotted. Um, so we'll begin first three, Pam, Beth, and Chrissy. And it's helpful because I can see you get ready, so that means I know those three people are here. <laughs> Good evening. Uh, my name is Pam Dowdy, and usually I'm wearing my Smart Start hat um, when I speak with you. But today I'm here on behalf of the League of Women Voters of Wake County, a nonpartisan political organization working to encourage active participation in government and where I serve as a member of the board. On August 23rd, the League hosted its annual Women's Equality Day reception in celebration of the 19th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution, which acknowledges women's right to vote. That evening, we recognized all women currently elected to state and county offices, to city and town councils within Wake County, and to the judiciary. We had the pleasure of honoring Ms. Uh, Johnson Hostler, Ms. Kushner, and Ms. Cash, who we did not have her certificate for that evening. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> Ms. M Ms. Mahaffey was unable to attend, and I'm here to present her with, well, actually them, with their <laughs> certificates of appreciation that they would have received that evening. The certificate reads as follows. The League of Women Voters of Wake County uh, presents this certificate for your public service in celebration of Women's Equality Day. On behalf of the League, I thank each of you for your service to the citizens of Wake County. So, if I may. Try to speak fast. 
Hi, my name is Beth Farrell and I have three kids that attend Mills Park Elementary School. We have lived in Cameron Pond since 2007, 11 years. I am currently the vice president of the PTA and have been room mom year after year and volunteered too many hours to count. My latest project has been getting a new play set for the kids. This has been a three year project and is finally projected to go in this school year. Many of the parents in this room have given money towards this project that now their kids, including mine, may not be able to enjoy. I grew up in the Wake County public school system from K through 12th grade. Redistricting was a problem when I was in school, so my parents decided to put me in a magnet school in downtown Raleigh. I attended Underwood Elementary from K through 5th grade. While I had a great education and experience, there was always something missing. Not to mention I lived in North Raleigh and had to ride a in a car for 45 minutes or on the bus for over an hour one way. I didn't really attend school functions and never had playdates with kids in my neighborhood who attended other schools. I tell you all of this because I wanted different for my kids. I wanted them to attend their neighborhood school, which you can see from our neighborhood, and be able to walk to school when they were old enough. Do you see the shirt I'm wearing? It says one on the front. Why, you might ask? Mr. Regan, our awesome principal, gave these shirts to all the teachers, staff, and PTA board members this year. We wear them often as a reminder that we are one. I stand before you with my neighbors as one community that is pleading with you to keep us where we are. I am one mom trying to advocate for what's best for my children and neighborhood. You are one board making a decision that could affect our entire community negatively if you don't change this draft and leave us where we are. There has to be another way. Moving kids year after year is not the answer. Stability and proximity are. Research has proven that parents' involvement in their child's school results in better test scores and grades, a more socially responsible child, improved behavior, and more regular school attendance. When you show your child their school is important to you, it will become important to them. Did you know that Cameron Pond only fills 107 seats at Mills Park? Only 11.2% of all students for the 2018-19 school year. But Cameron Pond parents serve as 17.2% of the room parents. How many of you in this room are room parents or have been? Cameron Pond families are involved Involved in higher than average levels at Mills Park. Two out of seven parents serve on the PTA board and Cameron Pond parents make up 50% of our nourishing noggins coordinators. Why? Because we feel as though Mills Park is our neighborhood school. If this proposed redistricting goes through, we will scatter. Many families, including mine, can't attend the year-round option and traditional options are simply too far and will not be able to invest our time or money in a different school just possibly to be moved again. Why neighborhoods down 54 attend Mills Park, but my son cannot walk next year? I keep hearing cap and overcrowding, but Mills Park has the lowest number in eight years. Our principal lost money um, from his salary because there are less kids this year at Mills Park. Furthermore, I am a sub for Wake County and teach in the Mills Park classrooms on a weekly basis. Just yesterday, I was subbing in a class when I learned that one, the one and only second grade TA was no longer going to be the TA and being moved because our numbers that get turned after the 10th day of school um, are too low. This is absurd. I'm asking you to take one minute and review all the data facts and feedback that we've given you because together we are one and we would love the opportunity to work with you to stay as one. Thank you. Hi. <laughs> My name is Chrissy Campbell. On behalf of Cameron Pond, we hope that our continued efforts to have draft two change does not come across as disrespectful during this time of mourning, but rather as a demonstration of how motivated we are to advocate on behalf of those we love most, our children. Safety should be the top priority when considering school reassignments. Rerouting Cameron Pond students to Carpenter Elementary, Green Hope, Weatherstone, or West Cary Middle will force buses to navigate their way through the intersection of Carpenter Fire Station Road and Highway 55. Access points to all of these proposed schools are either permanently closed or under major construction. Highway 55 alone has seen its fair share of accidents, including one that cost a student her life in 2015. Safety issues will only be compounded by the four-year train project, followed by road widening for an additional two to three years, amounting to six to seven years of more risky and delayed commutes. Our children already get home 45 minutes after dismissal. What is an acceptable arrival time when faced with longer travel and major construction? How does this support improved efficiency and prioritize student safety? Flip the coin and now consider the safety of children walking on a greenway. We've heard you question whether or not the greenway will be used, but please consider the following. The Panther Creek Greenway should not be compared to the Cary Park Greenway as it does not cross a single road. Furthermore, our greenway connects to both an elementary and middle school, where older children will likely walk independently of adult supervision. This goes hand in hand with supporting student safety as it provides a much safer path than the one middle school students are currently using. 
We're also currently trying to implement the Morning Mile program, which is a before-school walking and running program that encourages physical activity, thereby helping to reduce childhood obesity. Let's not forget your own mandate that states the board is committed to providing a school environment that promotes student wellness and supports active transportation to and from schools, including walking and biking. Taking away our ability to use this greenway points the finger back at you for influencing utilization. As far as Cameron Pond is concerned, utilization is not the issue, opportunity is. With this in mind, we ask that you consider a two-mile walk zone that guarantees neighborhoods an assigned base school should it fall within such boundaries. Lastly, I would like to refute the rationale behind the Panther Creek Greenway that was previously argued by the board as a means to connect neighborhoods to parks. This is not the sole purpose, as evident in the Mills Park concept plan, which was supported with input and financial contributions by the Wake County Public School System. It reads, children will be able to safely bicycle and walk to school from their neighborhoods on the Greenway system. In closing, I leave you with one thought that I hope will resonate with you throughout the last few weeks coming up to the final vote. In the time it has taken myself and one other person to address their concerns, our children will have arrived safely by bike to the Mills Park schools if you let them. Thank you. Julie, Chase, and Scott. First of all, I'd like to offer my deepest condolences to all of you and Ms. Hartenstein's family. I realize how difficult this must be, so thank you for continuing all of your hard work and keeping an open mind. I support the comments that you will hear from my fellow concerned Cameron Pond neighbors. It was extremely disappointing to see the draft two proposal has not taken into account all the facts provided by Cameron Pond. It was also disheartening to see many school board members have no idea where Cameron Pond is located. Before you decide on a vote that will have such a profound negative impact on all of our families, I personally invite you to come to Cameron Pond to see the proximity of the confirmed greenway to the Mills Park schools, where you could actually see the school from the street. As I look over all the data between draft one and draft two and watched all the school board sessions, the conclusion that is clear is that Carpenter Elementary is negatively impacted by moving Cameron Pond families from Mills Park to Carpenter. Even with the revised numbers in draft two, it is undeniable evidence that Mills Park elementary utilization numbers improve and Carpenter still suffers. This is completely against the spirit behind student achievement and is causing the lower performing school to be negatively impacted. In draft two, page four, it shows the following. As of September 18th, 2018, current data, Mills Park is at 115% utilization with trailers and is a capped school. Carpenter is much higher at 131% utilization with trailers and is also a capped school. Page nine then shows the following. The net result is that in the next two school cycles with the proposed reassignment on the bottom graph, Carpenter will be at 121% while Mills Park is at only 113% utilization. More importantly, it appears that the Carpenter Elementary base will have several hundred new homes built that will feed into the already over capacity school. This will only worsen their utilization numbers. This will just be a vicious cycle that will repeat itself over and over again. On the contrary, the area for the Mills Park Elementary base does not seem to have a single new construction neighborhood that will feed into it. And if the, Carpen, if the Cameron Pond kids are allowed to stay, most of our kids will just age out of the, of the elementary school. We know you're looking for solutions for the growing population in Wake County. Instead of reserving seats at a school for brand new neighborhoods that haven't made any investment in the community, why not establish a set distant radius for existing neighborhoods to stay at their schools? Brand new or proposed neighborhoods should be assigned to the new schools where one bus can pick up an entire neighborhood, which would also help with operational efficiency. It's completely unjust to move existing neighborhoods to schools further away where our families have devoted all of our resources to help the, make these schools and communities what they are today. Sadly, it does make it hard to want to continue to invest in Wake County schools if established neighborhoods like ours don't have any sense of security or stability. Thank you. Hi, my name is Chase Brady, and I have five children, four of which have already been moved once. Um, we have written hundreds of posts on Envision and asked many questions and offered many solutions, but haven't had any answers come back to us. We've tried to get a meeting with Mr. Carroza to help us better understand the rationale for moving us and also explain some of our ideas that we think would provide solutions to the issues at hand. We're told that he doesn't have time to meet with neighborhoods, which we completely understand because I'm sure everyone would want to meet with him, but it's very frustrating 
frustrating when we're trying to help give solutions and ideas, but no one is there to reach out to. Um, I know I reached out to a few of you for meetings so that we could talk for the same things about solutions and that we could answer any questions that our neighborhood could provide for you. Um, a board member said that they didn't see any reason to hold a meeting with constituents in a colleague's district and added that they were out two years ago. We're really committed to help provide solutions, but again, it makes it hard if you won't listen and won't recognize that our area has changed a lot in two years. And I know some of you may feel like it's a waste to meet with us because we don't get to vote for you, but we, but we still take seriously the fact that you guys do represent us and you do get a vote. Um, and I do wanna thank Ms. McCaffrey. I know you've gone out of your way to um, meet with a lot of us and the um, president of the PTA as well. Um, there was also some board members here saying that the Greenway does not link to our school on purpose, that it was purely by chance, and this really is false. Um, linking Cameron Pond to the schools was literally written into the Mills Park concept plan, and Christy just read that to you guys, but I think I'm going to read it again, even though she said it, because it, it really says what we've been saying. Mills Park will act as a trailhead for the Greenway, as well as an access point for the Greenway users to reach the schools. Children will be able to safely bike and walk to school from the neighborhoods on the Greenway system. System. Many neighbors and students who, attend the, who attended the public input sessions were most excited about this opportunity. That was us. Um, so we've been in contact, as probably a lot of you know, with like the mayor and multiple Town of Cary representatives and their staff. Um, we haven't asked them to take any kind of side or get involved with student assignment decisions. What, what we've asked from them is that they just help provide you facts because it seems like you're all saying that this, this was kind of random and by accident that we... Um, that we are linking to the school. They've been supportive of us and said that they are purposeful in connecting Cameron Pond to Mills Park. They told us that they've sent you all documents and many of them have personally reached out to you. And I believe that like us, they're a little perplexed that you have all this information yet are still proposing to move us. Um, we're a small neighborhood, we're fully built out. We have less than two kids per class at the elementary school and even less at the middle school. And this actually allows us to provide stability to Mills Park schools. We are not going to grow bigger. We have provided suggestions, Apps, ideas. We've given you guys so much information. Please take all these facts into consideration, and we are more than happy to meet with anyone that would like to or show you around our neighborhood um, and answer any questions. Thank you. I'm Scott Lemke. I have uh, two young daughters. One of them is in first grade, and the other one's going to be a rising kindergartner. The first grader, she's looking forward to uh, showing her, her uh, sister how to get to their new classroom. And hopefully it can be at the same school as she's gone to, so she has some experience with that. And <clears throat> So I'm here to, from Cameron Pond, I'm here to address a few issues. I know we've watched the YouTube video that was presented on, uh, on September 18th from the working session of the uh, reassignment plan. And there were a few things that stood out to me as being inaccurate. And I know that you want the most accurate information going into making your decisions for where to put students. And I, th I think that's very important. Uh, a good model can only, uh, provided the best output when you have good inputs. Garbage in, garbage out. So you need to uh, take that in consideration. I hope that you know, we can, uh, working with the communities, be able to get all the most accurate and latest information to you. Uh, one of the things that I, was the uh, number of uh, students that walk. And my, my daughter came home with a sheet from school and said, you know, two people carpool, 17 ride the bus. Nobody walked. It was a little disappointing to me that as close as Mills Park is to all this, to the uh, neighborhoods that nobody was really walking. Then I found out a little more information about this and that Mills Park isn't a walking school. So they don't keep track of how many kids walk and they don't <clears throat> list out you know, the ones that are walking occasionally because they're still taking the bus. We need to, we need to provide bus transportation for them because you know, they're the zone is one and a half miles that you can, you don't have to provide the transportation, but a lot of the parents request that. And you know, if you don't want a whole bunch of angry parents, I understand that you uh, <clears throat> do provide. But that leads to misleading numbers that you can use for how many kids will actually use the Greenway and walk. We have a fair number of students already from the middle school that will walk the 2.6 miles around the long way, taking the sidewalks around from Green Level Church down Carpenter Fire Station and then into the entrance of Cameron Pond on Friday so they can get some time with their friends. 
With the opportunity for the Greenway, I see that uh, they're taking the Greenway more often to get home to visit their, their friends. There's going to be the park right next door that they can then use to have a pickup game of basketball or soccer before going on their way home. So I'd just like you to help you know, consider that in your, in your plans going forward and take a look at you know, really getting the information from us and meeting with us again. And my condolences on the loss of your fellow board member. Thank you. Brenda, Nathaniel, and Leslie. Good evening. First of all, I want to say my deepest sympathies to all of you and to Ms. Hartenstein's family. Um, that was a very unexpected um, passing of Ms. Hartenstein, and, and she will be missed, I'm sure. So um, tonight I want to uh, read some something to you all that hopefully you have already been given by some of the town of Cary officials that we have reached out to. But in case you haven't had the opportunity to read it, I'm going to read to you pieces of the actual town of Cary submission that resulted in them receiving over $1 million per agreement number 6069, federal aid number CMS-0540032. It is the funding for the Panther Creek Greenway. Their submission states, the asphalt trail linking a middle school, an elementary school, a town park, and a commercial activity center to residents on either side of a major thoroughfare in Interstate 540. Skip ahead. Thus creating safer bicycle and pedestrian access to the schools, park, and commercial center. The project endpoint is stated as um, the sidewalk at Cameron Pond Drive to the east and to the existing town park, elementary school, and Mills Park Drive, street side trail to the south. It goes on to talk about um, the link explanation. Uh, to the east, the project ties in an existing private trail which links to the sidewalk along Carpenter Fire Station Road, a major arterial via internal neighborhood sidewalks. That neighborhood is ours, Cameron Pond. So, Town of Cary's own words talks about linking Cameron Pond to Mills Park, elementary school, and middle school. And they received federal funding for that. So I just want you to be aware of that if you aren't already. There's something to be said about we were here first and we're in a walkable zone. That should be sacred. So as to align with Wake County Public School System's wellness policy, students in established neighborhoods are being uprooted and destabilized while giving our seats to kids at um, Mills Park Middle from brand new neighborhoods, not even built yet. How is that even possible? How is that rational? They have no ties and they can't walk to that school, but we can. Why not send Ridgefield Farms, which sits north of McCrimmon Parkway, to um, Alston or one of the other middle schools? Why not send Greenmore and Crestmont, which is south of Green Level West Road, to either Lufkin Road or to Apex Friendship Middle? We have provided numerous suggestions, solutions that allow our students to stay where they are, to keep them stable, to allow them to walk, and please reconsider your plans, please. Good evening, my name is Nathaniel Green. I also live in the Cameron Pond neighborhood. Thank you again for the time to speak tonight. I'm gonna to shorten my comments because a lot of what I was about to say is, has been said by others. Um, there's, there's two main points I wanted, wanted to bring up tonight. Um, one was that, uh, well, I guess three. <laughs> one was that, I think what you're hearing tonight is first and foremost, we are a community, a community that's been established and we support each other, we go to each other's houses, um, we enjoy each other's company, and um, we fight for each other. Um, we stick together and um, we organize ourselves, we coordinate with each other's efforts, and that's all in the effort to uh, do good for our families, for our kids, and for our community at large. Um, I say this being a, ad, a staunch advocate for our community in several ways. 
on the Northwest Cary YMCA board um, on a grassroots uh, organ organization called the Northwest Cary Community Connection where we engage with government as well as on our HOA. Um, having been innately involved with all those organizations, I'm impressed by the level of commitment we see from our citizens here. I think it's something that's very rare. Um, so I think that's why what you're hearing tonight uh, and every other day in your inbox and on the Envision uh, website is something that's unique uh, and something that I would really hate to break up. Um, and I do think sending our kids to lots of other schools, um, making us send, choose between a traditional uh, application school that we may not get into uh, and giving us two options because even the first choice is overflowed as um, would be very unfortunate for our area. You, you may not know, but when the Panther Creek Greenway is built, they are building the Mills Park Community Center just a couple of years later. It'll be the first community center in the town of Cary West of 55. It'll have lots of um, opportunities to serve populations in our area. And we're very excited about that. That's the next step. That's the next phase. So we really are one community, and that, that community does involve our schools. Um, on, one thing that I do want to share tonight is that the Northwest Cary YMCA is also particularly excited about the Greenway because of the after school and before school program we have at the YMCA. We're, I chair the Safe Connections Task Force. Uh, it just so happens I also live in Cameron Pond. Um, but we are focused on getting kids safely to and from the YMCA, and we are looking at chaperoned walks to and from the Greenway, both before and after school, um, to promote safe walking and safe biking. And we are also looking into the Morning Mile program that um, one of our other citizens, Chrissy, mentioned as well. That's truly a unique opportunity, and I hope that we can be uh, the beginning of what could be uh, great for all the kids, not only in our area of Wake County, but for Wake County in general. Um, thank you for the time tonight. Um, and uh, I, you guys have a tough job. And I, again, just want to thank you for your service and for legitimately listening to all of our concerns. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Leslie Kramer. I'm also a mom in Cameron Pond. Um, uh, I want to say I'm sorry to hear about Ms. Hartenstein. I think her passing reminds all of us um, how much service you literally all give to our community, and I do thank, th thank you for that. I um, recognize that student assignment is complicated and it's not an easy task at all. Um, however, I have to respectfully say that I think moving Cameron Pond from Mills Park School is like putting a little Band-Aid on a huge gaping wound. It doesn't stop the bleeding. It literally just makes a bigger, stickier mess. I understand that saying that doesn't help you at all. You need a solution that does get you to a place where you don't have cap schools and there are seats for our kids. <clears throat> I believe the answer is keeping established neighborhoods at their established schools and moving new neighborhoods to new schools. This will immediately stop the bleeding. Cameron Bond is completely built out. There's no new houses. The majority of our families are complete, and we're literally growing out of the elementary school. I spoke to the woman at Mills Park Elementary School who handles every single student assignment at that school. She said this year's kindergarten class and last year's kindergarten class were the first two classes that she can remember where every single student that applied by December got a seat in kindergarten. I think that is the perfect illustration of the fact that the current geography for Mills Park Elementary School is literally growing out of that school. She said right now there's only three kids that aren't able to be at Mills Park in kindergarten. If you keep doing what you always do, like you said, um, you're not going to get a new result. Stop this terrible cycle. Um, I understand that busing can be a problem, but today the busing is not super efficient, and I think actually having an entire school going to an entire, an entire neighborhood going to an entire school will actually help you. I've looked at your presentations, I've watched your um, meetings, and I truly believe the reason that you need to move Cameron Pond is to fill the middle school, not because the elementary school has a problem. So I want to help you by giving some solutions. This is a neighborhood, Ridgefield Farms. It has 144 houses. I went and I spoke to the realtor. He said the majority of all of the homes will be finished by the 2019-2020 school year. That neighborhood is up here. Our neighborhood is here, here's Mills Park Schools. 
in your proposal, all of these homes will go to Mills Park Middle School, literally kicking us out, the people that have been here and established here. Why can't this neighborhood, who has no ties to Mills Park Middle School, no ties to our community, go to the new middle school? Secondly, all of these colors are blocks of other proposed buildings. I counted over 400 new homes. All of those should also not be able to go to Mills Park Middle School. I'm sorry I got cut off. Thank you. Maggie and Jennifer and Caitlin. Good evening. My name is Maggie Whittem, and I am a fifth grader at Mills Park Elementary. When I found out from my parents that my brother, sister, and I were going to be transferred to a different school and a different calendar next year, I was very sad. Why me? Why again? Why do they keep doing this to, to kids? You see, I have already been transferred once in my short career in elementary school. I remember also feeling devastated and scared. I had to leave behind several of my friends and had to adjust to not seeing them as much. I also had to get used to a whole new group of teachers and a new principal. What if my teachers didn't like me? What if the other kids didn't like me because I was new? I was worried. So you see, when I found out that I was going to have to move again, I've been having the same feelings as before, except worse. Because as if it wasn't scary enough that I'm going to middle school next year, but now I'll have to go to a school that is far away and most of my friends likely won't be there. I've been so excited for the past year to go on to middle school at Mills Park. It's familiar to me, and that is a huge comfort at a time where there will be a lot of changes. Also, I've been patiently waiting for the day when I would be able to ride my bike to school, and as of next year, I would. I, would f I could finally ride on the greenway that will connect my neighborhood to Mills Park. It's my dream come true. Not only do I love riding my bike with my friends, but I don't but I am also a year-round swimmer, and next year practice will start very soon after school dismisses. If I had to ride a bus for 45 minutes to an hour, I would be very late to every practice. Taking the Greenway home from school will allow me to also get a head start on my homework and leave more time for playing with my friends or being involved in other after-school activities. So I ask you all respectfully to change your plan and keep us where we are. Below is a list of my friends in the neighborhood that have already changed schools because of capped schools or reassignments. This does not include when they had, have had to change from elementary to middle or middle school to high. Damon Campbell, two schools. Avon Simper, two schools. Jeb Durden, two schools. Good evening. Uh, my name is Jennifer Whittem. I'm Maggie's mom, and with all due respect, she had everybody's approval to say their names on our neighborhood Facebook yeah. page. So thank you. I would like to convey my deepest condol condolences to you on the loss of Mrs. Hartenstein. I could tell the very first time that I actually met her was the last Wake County student, student School Board meeting. And I remember her talking about how she had just gotten back from her Alaskan cruise. And she seemed very refreshed and energized. And she definitely just gave off that persona of somebody that you could tell really genuinely cared about the students and her community. And so I am very sorry about that. I'm really proud of my daughter, too. Um, at 10 years old, I would have never been able to have the composure that she did, as you can tell. <laughs> but I'm here to speak to you tonight as a mother of three children and also as a pediatrician. So I want to focus on safety, physical activity, and our mental health crisis that we are experiencing at an exponentially growing rate in this nation, state, and community. As we've already mentioned, kids nowadays are getting less and less aerobic exercise every day, and childhood obesity continues to be on the rise. There have been countless programs that have been initiated on a national and local stage to try and get our kids out moving again. 
Safe Routes to School is one of those organizations. Vision Zero for Youth, eliminating traffic fatalities and serious injuries by improving safe walking and bicycling for children. Walking or biking to school serves to connect our kids again to each other. I mean, we've all seen the commercials of the kids that are standing two feet away from each other and they're talking to their friends via text message. This is not a good scenario. As technologically advanced generations are growing up and starting to get jobs, we're seeing how they have terrible social skills and cannot communicate to an individual face to face. By walking to school, this is, albeit a small way, but it forces the kids to actually communicate with each other and, oh my gosh, do I dare say play. We need to let our kids play more. That's an incredible way for them to grow socially. In 2009, 203,000 chi 203, children aged 15 and younger were injured in motor vehicle accidents. 15 of those injured were pedestrians. By keeping us at Mills Park, You've done an excellent job by eliminating some of those pedestrian vehicle accidents. In 2011, the National Center for Safe Routes to School, personal vehicles taking students to school accounted for 10 to 14% of all personal vehicle trips made during morning peak commute times. The list goes on and on with statistics. And that's all the time I have. But I would like to thank you very much for your time and for listening to us. And I please do hope that you will take our, our suggestions to heart. Thank you. Hi, my name is Caitlin Atkin, and I hate that I have to switch gears right now. I am representing Jones Terry Elementary School and every parent's worst nightmare. I do appreciate, actually, that I recognize a lot of familiar faces, and I appreciate that you have been working very hard um, on our behalf. Uh, so Arthur Kachekov has been terrorizing our school for four years now. You can walk into our school and ask any teacher what he wears every single day they can tell you, because one of them, when they're allowed to go out to recess, has to watch him pace back and forth while the other watches our children. And after this summer's trespassing where he dressed in military fatigues and took pictures of the locks of our school in the kindergarten and first grade wing, we raised a huge uproar, but it wasn't enough because now, just recently, he said he actually wants to slaughter our children. So thankfully, he's in prison right now, but it won't be for long. Um, it's a Class H felony. It's pretty low since they go up to A. And he will soon be out in the community again. And as much as I appreciate everything that has been done, I'm going to keep it brief. We still need that armed guard to be permanent. We need more. We need the teachers to be able to lock their doors from the inside as well as the outside. And we need a double entry security vestibule that is standard for every new school that goes up in this community. It's an old school, and it's a beautiful, amazing grade A school with some of the best teachers I have ever met in my life. At the Wake County Board of Commissioners meeting last night, we brought up a lot of this information to them, and do you want to hear the most surprising part of it? None of you have reached out to ask them for money that they have and are willing to spend on this. I thought that was pretty fascinating. I don't want to be here right now. I'm not prepared with a huge long speech. I would love to be having dinner right now with my family, but here I am, floored, that you just haven't asked for the money Jones Dairy Elementary School's children have been threatened with their lives. I'm terrified to send my two kids to potentially be slaughtered. That's huge. His words, not mine. Three things. That armed guard needs to be permanent. The doors need to be locked better. And the double entry security vest, we're not asking for much. We funded our own fence. We appreciate some of the help we got, too. But we're serious about this. And if we don't get it, we're going to start pulling our children from one of the best schools I've ever been a part of. So please reach out to the Wake County Board of Commissioners and ask for their money that they have and are willing to give you for Jones Dairy Elementary School. Deb, Allison, and Maharajan. Hi, 
My name is Deb McNaughton. Thank you for the opportunity to speak today. I am a Cam Cameron Pond resident, and I have three children, one in elementary, one in middle school, and one in high school. I'm still a little bit shaken up from the last presentation, um, which is very alarming. I have three children in, in, the, Cameron, in the Mills Park I Elementary. I had a whole speech planned. You've had facts and statistics and information shared with you today, so I don't feel the need to repeat that. What I would say is that this group behind you has put in endless hours, is extremely passionate about finding solutions that work for not only our kids but other kids in this, re in this reassignment proposal. I do want to stress what's already been stressed, that the Greenway is not proposed. The Greenway is approved. The Greenway has been built underneath the 540 already. I w a picture is worth a thousand words. It's there. It's present. It just has some finishing connections to do for us to be able to use it. There are families that have been anxiously awaiting. I call it the path in our backyard. It's literally in our backyard, and we are waiting to be able to use it. I know you had some previous questions about whether we would really use it. Yes, we will. We, our children walk now. The middle schoolers walk, and they walk often. You can talk to the local businesses at the corner of Carpenter Fire Station and Green Level Church, and they'll talk about the kids that visit at the end of the day. We've talked a little bit about proximity being critically important. Obviously, it's one of your pillars. And you've talked about, I, I think sometimes there's this um, look at proximity in terms of the distance between the neighborhood to the school. But you have to also consider the busing. If you're, not, if you're taking away opportunities to walk to school, then you have to look at proximity through the lens of a non-active travel route. We have busing situations where people are two miles away and it's taking them a whopping 45 minutes to, to get to the school. That doesn't seem like a good trade. You have an opportunity to keep a neighborhood connected, not close, not proximal, connected to the campus. Please allow us that opportunity to stay connected to the campus because I think everyone wins out of that. Um, I would just say that I think in an effort for the, for the reassignment committee to prioritize the K through eight alignment across Wake County, the balance has shifted too far and you've lost the proximity. So in doing that prioritization of the K through eight alignment, we end up reducing opportunities across the board for students to walk and bike and we put more kids on more buses for more hours. I don't think that that's good for, pay, for students, families, or for our operational efficiency. Thank you. Hello, my name is Allison. I live in Cameron Pond neighborhood. I have two daughters at Mills Park Middle. I'd like to thank all my neighbors we've heard from this evening. I'd also like to thank the school board for your commitment to our children. In addition, I would like to acknowledge that we're sorry for the recent loss of one of your colleagues and friends. But I stand before you tonight not only as a representative of Cameron Pond, but also from the north side. I know you know there's a difference. There's a busy road in between the neighborhood. Um, but we're a member of an entire community, and I'm also standing before you as a mom. My youngest daughter is a sixth grader at Mills Park Middle. Sixth grade has been a huge transition for her. She has three minutes to switch classes, less than 20 minutes to eat lunch. She has a locker and a padlock. She has new hallways to navigate, hundreds of new faces she's meeting, at least seven new teachers to adjust to, and the daily routine moves quickly. She has only one friend she recognizes from elementary school in her homeroom class. And despite these challenges, though, she is slowly adjusting and becoming more confident and independent. But that was the first half of the first quarter. And fast forward to today, she knows I'm standing here before you tonight. She knows the current situation is that she may not be coming back to Mills Park Middle. She already has had to attend two elementary schools and she remembers starting over. She is stressed and worried and this is all she is thinking about. 
Instead of enjoying her time at school and focusing on adapting to all these new things, she is thinking about having to change schools again next year and to do this all over. This is a setback that will affect her personal growth and learning in the years to come. In fact, research suggests that setbacks such as this can last at least six months per transition, which is two-thirds of a school year. This is not right, and this is just one family's example. This past Friday, we submitted a petition signed by over 80 of the only 100 homes on our side of the neighborhood. It shows deep uni unity and deep concern over these reassignments, and it asks for the following. Number one, please keep our st students where they're currently assigned. We understand on our side, this includes Alston Ridge Elementary, but this also includes Mills Park Middle, same as our neighbors on the south. We understand that Alston Ridge Elementary children currently enrolled will likely move to Alston Ridge Middle, which is great. However, we also have a small number of children enrolled at Mills Park Middle School now, and that should not be disregarded. And if there's truly no other solution, then number two, please revert the grandfathering policy back to allowing rising fourth and fifth graders and rising seventh and eighth graders to remain enrolled in their current schools, including Mills Park Middle School. School mobility, especially involuntary, is detrimental to a child's educational growth and social and emotional well-being. We attach supporting documentation with our petition, and I can personally attest to the stress it can cause a preteen. Please keep our children where they are. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I am Maharajan Shanmugam. I have two daughters, elder one in uh, second grade and uh, younger one in kindergarten. And I'm here to speak as a voice of Town Hall North community. Like, we are here because we are one of the community who are badly impacted with this school assignment. So many parents have already shared their concerns, and I'm really not sure if I will have anything new to contribute. Nevertheless, let me share my thoughts on why many of us here are really concerned about the school assignment. Our kids from Town Hall North community current, currently assigned with Cedar Fort Elementary, which is 0.4 miles away, just across our community. And now all of a sudden, the board has decided to move our children to a school which is 18 miles away from what, what, where we are now. Our children are forced to travel more than 10 times the average travel time of what they are doing right now. How unfair is that? I personally believe children should be exposed to more extracurricular activities when they are in elementary and middle school, as once they are in high school, academics would take the front burner and they will have to cut down on any many extracurricular activities. And traveling a long way back from school again would force them to compromise on their playtime. What miracles we can expect from a child that is forced to spend quality time in traveling? Traveling 18 miles up and down every single day will definitely burn out the ch child's energy. And a school 18 miles is a nightmare for the parents in case of any emergency. You get a call from the school saying the child is sick, and you have to travel 18 miles to pick him her up. up. So the bo board is providing us with an error on school option next year. But we believe in traditional school system, and we want to send our kids to a traditional school. Our children need summer breaks. It has been proven time and again the traditional school system has played a vital role in the holistic development of our children. Summer is a time where kids get to explore, bond with their families, visit their home country, and go on vacations. It is unfair to deny the simple pleasures of summer vacation and advantages of traditional school system to our children. A lot of hue and cry have been already made regarding this issue. We have left no stone unturned to have our children continue their education in a nearby traditional school. If the majority of parents don't want their children to attend an air around school system, why do we need to have an air around school in the vicinity? Why can't it be converted into a traditional school? What is the point in giving something that is completely unacceptable to a huge cross-section? Even the board agreed many times before that we have more demand for traditional. That's the reason they are not able to accommodate more students. Please supply for the demand. I hope this evening turns out to be a fruitful one, and the board will address our concerns at the earliest. May our ha children have the privilege to continue their studies in a traditional school system, and that too not at the expense of traveling miles. May our children grow up channelizing their quality time and energy in the most productive way. Thank you all. May we have your notes? May we, may we have your notes, please? 
I had a difficult time understanding you, and I would like to be able to read what you had to say. Thank you. Anne, Nasir, and Benyu. Hi, everyone. I'd also like to express my condolences on the death of your colleague. I under, I've heard great things about her, and I feel that it must have been a terrible loss for all of you. Um, you've heard a lot tonight about a lot of different things, and I just wanted to add one other point, which is very important in the relationship between a school board and a community, and that's trust. I remember in 2013 voting for a bond that I was told would increase the number of traditional seats in Wake County, and that was very important to me at the time. I strongly feel that it's in your best interest to honor the trust of the community, that that, that was what you would do. And because I want to be able to get behind a school bond. I have a long history of being an advocate for public schools, and I want to continue that. But I feel that if I don't know that what I vote for in a bond is going to be what turns out to happen, I'm not going to be able to get behind it, and I'm going to encourage my neighbors not to get behind it also. I feel very strongly that the demand is for traditional seats. We need traditional seats. We want traditional seats, and there are many fine year-round schools that we can send children to whose parents choose that option. The rest of us want, need, and deserve traditional schools within a close proximity to our house. They love me. I brought them. Um, uh, I. Oh my God! Now I lost my train of thought. You guys don't applaud. Um, okay, let's see. Um, yeah. The um, the only other thing that I wanted to say was that the option that you've offered the people in Morrisville, which is either a traditional option, um, very far away, a traditional option closer, still far away, but no busing, neither one of these are true options and particularly are not options if, as has happened in the past, you won't be honoring requests for children to switch into traditional calendar schools. So we need a traditional option close to our neighborhood. Parkside is right there. It's still being built, and I think we can see from all the oversubscribed traditional schools that parents care far more about proximity and traditional calendar than they do about trailer their kids going to school in mods or being overcrowded. Thank you. Yes. Good evening. My name is Nasir Beg and I live in Providence Place, Morrisville. I'm here to talk about Parkside Elementary School. My son is currently going to Cedar Fork. He's a third grader and my daughter is a rising kindergartner next year. I have a couple of points to raise here. First point is work-life balance. After living in New Jersey for 15 and a half years, we made a tough decision to move to North Carolina, North Carolina three years back. The key factor in choosing North Carolina, particularly Morrisville Cary area, was work-life balance it offers, along with excellent education and diverse community. Traditional school is the only school calendar option we knew of, so our first home in North Carolina was in Twin Lakes community, due to the traditional school option the, school, uh, the house was, to, was assigned to. In majority states, when schools get assigned to the house address, it never changes. Thus making housing in a certain neighborhood more demanding. In 2015, my son started kindergarten in traditional school, Cedar Fork. We love the school. It has, it has passionate teachers, staffs, excellent education achievement standard programs, balanced diversity with the proximity calendar. We had a good work-life balance. We were very settled as a family since the school was closer to home, and we didn't have to spend time to commute like we had to do in New Jersey. We chose Morrisville as a home in North Carolina. In 2016, we moved from uh, Twin Lakes to Providence Place just to make sure that we keep our kid in traditional school because we were afraid of the impact this change may have in our family. At this time, we, we could not have easily moved to a new we could have easily moved to a new construction or lower price house in Holly Springs Apex, but, but we did not choose to because we appreciated the work-life balance Morrisville had to offer. Today, I'm afraid that this new Parkside Elementary year-round school proposal will change this uh, work-life balance. 
We come from very diverse cultures, and we want WC, uh, WCPSS to, re to respect that. We chose Morrisville and w, uh, WCPSS because of everything excellent it has to offer and how it will remain excellent for our kids. Uh, kids. Draft 2 is very disappointing since it did not take into consideration any feedback from our community. Changing school takes away stability, consistency for every family. All these kids and family are one who provide stability uh, to our community, leading to overall success in North Carolina. Point number two, taxes and economic benefit. I would like to ask this board, haven't we paid our dues to the town long enough to get the credit in terms of keeping our current school a choice of school? I understand there are many families who want the year-round schools as, as well, and I completely respect that. It's their choice. Similarly, traditional schools is our choice. Third point, surveys. Have there been any official survey conducted by WP, uh, WCP which will say choose the school and the calendar? Um, I, I did not get any survey of that kind at all to make that decision. To sum this up, uh, my, my requirement from WCP is to provide a Providence Place, a traditional school with, transport, with transportation within four mile radius. Thank you. Good evening, I'm Benu Thomas. Last time we were here, some of us had the opportunity to talk to uh, Kathy, and she was telling us about her um, Alaska trip, like, like Jen said. And I kept on thinking about that while we were meeting over the last last uh, week, week and a half. So uh, thank you again for the opportunity to kind of come in front of you and, and speak to you. Um, we, we did what you asked. We provided feedback on Envision. We wrote emails. We probably wrote too many emails to you, so I apologize for that. But um, as you've heard, um, we are here fighting for our children. Um, we, as parents, we do get a little protective, so I apologize for, for, for that in advance. Uh, we want the opportunity to meet with you. Um, Lindsay, thank you so much for advocating on behalf of us. You met with us several times. We loved the opportunity to meet with Glenn, Glenn Caruso as he had met with other, other neighborhoods. Um, decisions that you make here today, each one of you, impact our children. That's why we want to we wanna speak to you. Um, a number of us, if we get split up, we're going to go to you know a couple of your districts. So we're going to we may end up becoming your um, you know our kids may be in your in your schools anyway. Um, in previous, we watched a number of YouTube videos. In previous um, meetings, you said that you should get input from you know PTA presidents. Well, you have gotten input from our PTA president and our PTA vice president. They strongly, strongly advocate keeping Cameron Pond with Mills Park. Um, there was also mentioned that Cameron Pond has not been reassigned, that somehow we have to pay our due. That's our rite of passage. And it's, it's quite the contrary. Over 30% of our children have already been reassigned twice, some over three times. And I won't mention names. A second grader already, already switched school twice. A fifth grader three times. Now we're asking the same kids to switch again. This is not fair. Um, our families have been eagerly waiting to send their kids to Mills Park. And we've been eagerly waiting to walk them to school. And Dr. Martin, like you said, this is how you build communities. You do things together. That's, that's what we're trying to build. Um, it's also been stated that reassigning Cameron Pond was decided two years ago. That's very difficult for us to hear. Recently, um, you also stated that Wake County system is dynamic. Our world of today is not the world of two years ago. We're, li we're living in a world of dynamic and, and accelerating uh, change. Please revisit the decisions from two years ago. You heard many benefits of engaging students at early, early on. We want to walk our kids to school. That that, those habits become behaviors, and that's what we want uh, for their lifetime. We ask the board to please reevaluate, and I, I hope that you consider keeping Cameron Pond at Mills Park. Thank you. Kala, Raja, and Satish. I don't see Kala, so we'll move on to Raja. Good 
गुड इवनिंग लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन आई एम यू टू रिक्वेस्ट ए ट्रेडिशनल स्कूल प्रॉक्सिमिटी टू द मॉरिसविल एरिया माई सन गोज टू सीडर फोर्क एंड लाइक मैनी हंड्रेड्स ऑफ किड्स गो टू सीडर फोर्क ऑल ऑफ ए सडन दे आर आस्ट टू गो फ्रॉम ट्रेडिशनल स्कूल टू ईयर ऑन स्कूल इट इज देयर माइंड सेट टू गो टू ट्रेडिशनल स्कूल एंड वी कैन नॉट जस्ट सडनली आस्ट दम टू गो टू ईयर ऑन स्कूल क्लोज बाय एंड दैट मेक्स अ लॉट ऑफ इम्पैक्ट when we make decisions we have to make brilliant decisions if not at least make good decisions keep it the way it is if you cannot improve that's fine don't make it go down that's all i'm asking the one option given was traditional school which is 23 miles away from my place and what is my son going to do or number of children is going to do they travel in the highway 40 traffic while going and coming one hour one hour each they take out their ipads or phones and they become addicted to video games <laughs> instead of coming home and playing you know everywhere pursuing their dreams playing football baseball swimming cycling whatever they are becoming addicted and they are going to be liable to the society in future they are going to have psychological problems these are the things we need to consider when we have to give them freedom to play would you agree if you are not allowed to play in the evening would you not cry would you not shout it has lot of impacts lot of impacts i don't want my children my son or anybody's children to become video addicts there are many countries trying to catch up with us and trying to do better so on the other hand what we are trying to do we are giving up our number one position and trying to push our kids to become addicts to video games and develop obesity and future they have a lot of health problems that will be liable to the country this is not acceptable let's make decisions not brilliant if not brilliant simple decisions simple logic good decisions that's enough it has been proven proximity schools helps a lot of way let's keep it that way it is proven in this country and there are people brilliant people in this country that we are number one in the world let's keep it that way these children are future of our country and we have no right to make their life miserable nobody has that right nobody has right to make their life miserable it is their right to have enjoy in the evening have activities some of them can get medals to our country they can pursue their dreams why are we number 1 in olympics most of the times because they are pursuing activities not slogging in the bus all the time reading their you know getting into the video games chatting and become video addicts this is a very sad thing this is a miserable thing right and the other choice were given the other choice which was given was another school in the which is goes to be like rtp traffic i work in rtp there are number of my colleagues who get more than 100k salary but they complain about go, driving in rtp they they don't want to come to office because of rtp traffic and how can we force these kids dictate these kids to go to the rtp traffic in the peak hours we are messing up their lives as well as the sorry time hours. time right? is expired thank so, you time has expired thank that, you thank you very much satish aaron vanitha and shannon i didn't see him i didn't see him i bet you're wondering what i'm going to talk about <laughs> Um, a couple of, of other points I'll add to the ongoing message of orange shirts. First of all, one of the comments that was made in the discussion after the first uh, revisions were done to the draft, which were no revisions, uh, on the proposed school plan alignments, one of the concerns that was raised by a board member was that we can't assure safety on a greenway, that that can't re really be a promoted message that the school board can get behind. I have great news. The town of Cary has already done that for you. They have stated, I quote, this section of boardwalk travels under the 540 overpass, providing a safe and attractive means of travel for bicyclists and pedestrians. Circulation patterns that need to be considered in park plans to allow for smooth and safe connections from the greenway to the school for children. Thank you to the town of Cary. Uh, other point that I want to make that adds to the reasons behind why Cameron Pond should be given a very, very pointed consideration in a draft three is common sense. 
The fact of the matter is, I know that it's a rare artifact on a political stage, and unfortunately, even local politics can have a bureaucratic leaning. Bureaucracy, by definition, is the lack of efficiency and common sense in making policy. Please, a plead, not meant to be snarky. Have common sense. Think for a moment about the kind of situation if this was not in your jurisdiction. If someone told you the story of a neighborhood, maybe it was one of your children that lived there, maybe it was a grandchildren that went to school there, and they showed you the picture of a school with an eyesight at a just over two laps around a track distance, and how they were being pulled from that school, robbed of stability, robbed of connections, and robbed of the sense of community that brings people in ugly orange shirts two times within a month to talk to you. It's something that we want to retain that makes this area special. And this is the, our effort as citizens to try and help you preserve that as our representatives. And that is common sense to me. And I hope that that would be common sense to you when you think about what drives the need to make these sorts of changes and decisions. Lastly, I just want to make sure and let you know, I have zero doubt that you all are good people. I have no doubt that not just you, but those who are making these decisions are good people that have good intentions at heart. What I'm asking is to take a little personal consideration. When you're sitting around the table and looking at draft three and Glenn Carosa puts the slide up that says Cameron Pond, I hope you think about the orange shirts. I hope you think about us watching eagerly and waiting as the lives of our children and their success in school are on the line. And that you will know that we're crossing our fingers and hoping for just a little common sense in your decisions. Thank you. Good evening, my name is Vinita Cardoza, and I am representing Providence Place. Uh, my son goes to Cedar Fork, and we have been assigned Parkside as our school for next year. And as you know, Cedar Fork is traditional, and Parkside is year-round. After we saw the first draft, parents who were all affected by this assignment actually made our voices heard. We went and attended public meetings. We just told everybody that we did not like the year-round option. There are a lot of parents who are against the year-round option. We really respect parents who like this option, but there are a lot of parents who do not like this option. So we even had our comments on the Envision site. But after the second draft came out, we were very, very disappointed. It just seemed to us that our voices were not at all heard. And the traditional option given to us was Powell Elementary, which, as some of my friends mentioned here, is about 20 miles away from our home and 40 miles a student has to go on the bus every single day, a five-year or six-year or maybe 10-year-old. 40 miles is a concern to all the parents. I would be really scared. I'd be waiting, oh, when my son's going to come home. And I know a lot of parents feel that too. We do not feel safe to put our, parent, our children on the bus for 40 miles. Okay, and then we got this second draft. And the answer given to us was we were given a consolation prize. We got Pleasant Grove Elementary, which is, again, not very close from where we live. And the option was no buses. And as I think Raja mentioned, it's near the RTP area where there is heavy traffic. And if we had to take our kids to Pleasant Grove, that means that's going to take us 45 minutes. And again, it's almost the same concern, our kids on the road for a long time. So we really ask you and plead you that please make Parkside traditional if you cannot keep our kids in Cedar Fork. So we are requesting you for two options, either keep our kids where they are and they are happy there. My son was asking me, Mommy, what can I do to be in the same school? Can I come? And if I talk to the board, would they listen to me? I said, you try, baby. You can try. So he's saying, maybe may, my friends and I will come and say we want to be in our school because we love our teachers. We love the school. We love to be there. And I don't know what we can do to keep you there. And that's my answer to him. And as parents, we are really invested in the school. We go and volunteer our time, but if our kids have to go to Powell, which is like, say, 40, 23 miles one way, we cannot do anything in our school. So all I request the board is that you know, we need traditional options, and 
I think we really need more traditional seats. So please reconsider your opinion of making Parkside as year-round. If you cannot, please let our kids where they are right now. Thank you. Hello, board members. Thank you for hearing my comments. And I want to say that I'm very sorry for the loss of your friend, an advocate in the community, and a leader for the school system. I'm very sorry. My name is Shannon Beach. My son, Evan, is seven years old. He is a first grader at Jones Dairy Elementary in Wake Forest. My son's favorite things to do are to play soccer with his friends, especially out during recess when they're able to go outside. And he loves to learn about creepy reptiles and insects and then bring that information home and creep me out. He gets great pleasure from that. His school teachers are doing a fantastic job in keeping a vibrant learning environment even during these testing times. I hear participants tonight and board members talking about collaborative learning spaces, school assignments, literacy programs, all great things, important things. I need to talk to you tonight about what I believe should be a basic a given which is safety and security for our children and safety and security breed confidence. I want to say thank you for requesting funding in the 2018 to 2019 budget with that funding going towards social and mental health support at our schools. Thank you for prioritizing that. I am very pleased that the Board of Commissioners approved that and support it, and I have asked that they continue to prioritize mental health initiatives across the community, including for adults. I am pleased also that the state school superintendent announced 35 million school safety grant statewide, and I hope that children across the state and in Wake County can benefit from this grant, especially soon. But Jones Dairy needs your attention immediately, please, as the safety of the children of Jones Dairy has been threatened, both through a trespasser on the school property and through his explicit social media threats toward the students. My son Evan's learning environment has been disrupted by these explicit threats on Jones Dairy's children, and in my view, his safety has been put at risk and may continue to be at risk. I also pray that he's not mentally scarred by the disruption in his day-to-day -day life. Because we want our children to remain safe physically and mentally, we request that you immediately submit to the Wake County Board of Commissioners your proposal for additional funds or a reallocation of budgeted funds with the funds to be applied toward indefinitely providing an armed guard on campus. Number two, to modify the school building to feature a security vestibule. Number three, for any lingering open recommendations from the annual safety assessment to be completed immediately. The Board of Commissioners has told us last night that they will not allow a funding request to go unheard or unconsidered. Please afford them the opportunity to hear that and approve it. Thank you for your patience to listen to all of us and thank you for listening to me. Nick, Thomas, and Swadeep. Good evening, and uh, my condolences as well to your colleague. I didn't know her, but your tribute to her tonight was very, 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 very touching. Um, I'm here tonight. My name is Nick Pione. I live in Wake Forest. My wife and I have three beautiful children, but I'm here to represent our kindergartner tonight, who is a beautiful, vibrant, five-year-old girl who loves to play with her older sister and brother, her golden retriever, and thankfully has no idea right now what's going on outside of her school. So I and my wife have attended PTA meetings. We attended the commissioner's meeting last night, and we're here tonight because, quite honestly, and I know you can appreciate this because I heard you many of you referenced that your parents and grandparents that we're not getting the answers we need. 
Um, I have no doubt in my mind that you're taking this seriously. Um, I know for a fact that security is a priority. I heard that. I believe that. But what I'm not hearing are the answers in when we're going to get those answers. I keep hearing things like we're assessing the situation, the person right now that's in jail. We'll, we'll evaluate his mental status as we go. I've heard things even from our own school about the realities of budgets, and that budget could impact the permanency of a school resource officer. And I did hear last night also that the county commissioners are willing to help. I am willing to help. Parents are willing to help here. If there's anything we can do to unite all parties involved to get to a decision is what I'm asking you for tonight. Because unfortunately, I know school security is important to all of you, but for Jones Dairy, there is a target on that school whether it's from the person that's, the, that's incarcerated now or whether in the world we live in today somebody else has latched on to that same fantasy, I don't know. But Jones Dairy is a target and the clock is ticking because the immediate threat, unfortunately, as we heard, with a Class H felony, will get out of jail. I want, let me say that again. He will get out of jail. So therefore, as a parent, I need to know right now what decisions are going to be made. So if I disagree with those decisions, I know what's best for my child. Now, I, I believe that those decisions will be the same because you're taking this seriously and the county has actually offered funding. But again, need urgency behind this and need a decision immediately. So again, I want to take you back to where I was in the beginning here, a beautiful five-year-old girl that is surrounded by a ton of beautiful children when I drop my child off in the morning. I know that's important to you. It is the most important thing in my life right now. Please make the decision to fund those three things. The permanency of a, of a school resource officer, hardening the securities at the school, uh, and also making sure that the classroom is secure as well, too. Thank you. I, too, am a, a parent of a Jones Dairy Elementary student. Uh, our Grady is a third grader there. Um, his brother, Jack, just left the school. He six wonderful years at the school, and his younger sister, Ella, will be a rising kindergartner. Um, not going to belabor the, the point that, that everyone's made. Um, just want to represent the school. but. You know, the third grader, middle child, Grady is just kind of, he's, he's the easygoing one. He's just kind of the, the go along with it guy, doesn't say much. Uh, they tracked in on Monday, and so it was, it was very concerning to us when he woke up on Monday and said, Mom, Dad, will, will you drive me to school today? He didn't want to take the bus. Um, and when we pulled up to the school and we saw the, arm, the, the, the security, the presence, um, comforting as a parent, but for him as a student, his first question to us was, Mom, do, do people ever break out of jail? I mean, and that, as a parent, is, is heartbreaking. Um, and so I, I cannot say I appreciate enough the presence. I know, Superintendent Moore, you've been at the school, um, at the same PTA meetings, hearing the same things. But you know, for him, it's, it's the unknown. Uh, and, and for us as the parents, we're scared as well. And it's because of the unknown. So really what I ask um, to echo the, the fellow parents is just communicate a plan, communicate a timeline for a decision. That's really what I would like to see is that we know, as Nick said, that he will be out of jail. It's a six to eight month prison term if convicted. Um, and I know that everyone is involved in taking precautions and trying to make sure that there are extensions to that and conditions to that. But the reality for us is that we're looking at March as the earliest time that this man will be released from jail. So we're just asking that set a deadline, set a timeline, please, so that we know that these long-term plans will turn into short-term plans, will turn into action plans, and we can make a decision um, with enough time to, to do what we think is best for our children. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. My deep condolences on your loss. Sorry for that. I'm Swadeep, and representing Town Hall North Morrisville. My son is five years old and currently going to Cedar Fork. New school assigned like option in draft two and draft three like Powell and other are not at all an option for us. 
they will lose like three hours of their valuable time just for commute. Again, thank you board, this is not at all a simple task. We understand how much pressure you have gone through and a uh, lot of things that you have took all the stats to get on to this. However, every year parents can't keep guessing whether their community will be still assigned to the same zone or they need to get ready for the school lottery game again. Board school should not focus only on the number of seats to be filled in the base school, but also think about impact to the kids' lives when they keep shuffling schools every year. Due to ro zone reassignments, when a base school is being removed from a community, only thing parents look for is the same format of the school and within proximity. Board should not force parents and kids to change the format based on the proximity. We believe this zone reassignment should be applicable for new communities rather than impacting existing communities. It's simple, like for a new person, the school will be new and he will be happy to go and he will choose the proximity of the school and so that his kid will have more time for the activities and everything. On the other hand, snatching away a school from a community which was closed till date will have adverse effects on the kids. The rate at which the new housing development is emerging cannot match to the schools what we have now. Just like we have this board to monitor the stats on the schools, it would be nice to put a threshold on your communities, else we will be landing up the same way every year. We would request board to consider all the points mentioned by all parents and rethink before finalizing TAF3. Our ask is simple. Keep Cedar Folk as our base school or make Parkside traditional. Thank you. Jewelry, Rahul, and Rajaswar. Thank you, all board members. Good evening. Okay, uh, my kid is in Cedar Fork. Okay, and he's a third, third grader. We are basically a migrant family, okay. What we know as of now is only one type of education that is only a traditional. And we have in a specific reason for which we have chosen the way county and our, uh, the location where we are, okay. Now, my community I'm representing here is Bexley Park. Bexley Park is an apartment, and it has got two buses of kids assigned to it. And all of a sudden, okay, and this redistricting is our, uh, the new assignment is coming in up where, okay, you are given in choices where we do not have in any information or how exactly actually it is going to be impacting our kids. The reason here is, okay, the assignments that are being given, okay, we thought at least in the first draft, on the second draft, it is going to be taken care, but we are not seeing that. So there is some kind of a gap which is existing over here. We would really like you to reconsider this and understand, okay, the kind of impact it is going to be making in on the kids. We are a part of the community, and I understand here that okay, if you really want the kids to perform well in their achievements, are the key goals of this uh, uh, education system, okay, it is more important to consider how exactly these impacts are going to be. So in case if it is for a survey, the survey has to be considered, applied at the school level to, give in, to be given to the students or the parents who are going to be impacted, okay? And based on which, okay, you can make up your decision. Fine, okay, there are people who want, okay, yearly, uh, uh, year-around schools. We have no issues with it. But the 
giving in the park side okay we we either want okay you to consider keeping in our students where we are or give us a park side to be as a traditional school thank you Well, thank you all uh, for the opportunity to speak with you today. Um, we really appreciate all the patience uh, and the feedback that other parents have provided. I think I'm a proud parent of a son who goes to Cedar Fork, and he's a first grader. And I think, as, as all parents mentioned, we don't like this draft. There are concerns which has clearly came out in all the conversation. Uh, for for our, us, I represent Town Hall North, uh, which is 0.4 mile. Yesterday, I walked with my son, um, you know, and dropped him in less than 10 minutes. I can literally walk from my home and I can drop my kids to the school. I can pick him in the evening again, right? Now, what I have given an option is to either take Powell, which is in the Rally downtown, which is 22 miles from our house, which means my kid will be spending at least an hour plus on the traffic and that to one way, and it will be two hours of his time. Now today he starts at 8.40 a.m. in the morning versus 6.30 a.m. if he has to go there. So that's a big, big problem for us. So I'm here today to request you that we need definitely need a traditional seat. Neighborhood school is what we're looking for. Uh, either you keep what we have today in place or, or, or you know, at least consider Pavel or the other school which we have, which is year around, to be the traditional school. Uh, so again, with that note, thank you all for listening to us. We are hoping that next draft will certainly going to address the concerns that we all have, and we are looking forward to the you know more more ex 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 acceptable draft going forward. Thank you. Is Rajaswar Rao here? Ravi, and then Raj, Rajet, Ranjit. Sorry. Good evening, everyone. I represent the Evans Farm community. I'm the HOA president there, so I'm representing the community today. Uh, the community was built, the neighborhood was built in 2010. I mean, uh, people started moving in 2010, and it's been there since then. And I personally moved there in 2012. And my older kid went to Mills Park Elementary, and then to Mills Park Middle, and now she's in Panther Creek. And my younger kid now is going to Mills Park Middle. She graduated from Mills Park Elementary. So. The proposal to move her now to Alston Ridge Middle is kind of, you know, working against our uh, family, basically. You know, two kids in the same family going to two different schools and two different calendar options, it's just not, uh, you know, going to gel within the family. I mean, it's just, this is just me, but there are a lot of families within my community who are going to face the same situation and who are in the same situation right now. Having moved from Ohio some years ago, the only option we knew was a traditional calendar. I mean, this year-round option is totally new to us. And now talking about Evans Farm, ours is the only community in the, neighbor, in the region that is totally isolated in the sense that we do not have a traditional calendar option as a base school. It is the only community which now has a year-round option as the only base school, which I feel is unfair. Having existed since 2010, the, the newer communities that are coming in now, Bridgefield Farms, Braymore, to I mean, just give a couple of examples, have been assigned year—I mean, element, I mean, uh, year-round and uh, traditional calendar schools as the base schools, and. These schools are, I mean, the kids from these schools are, these communities are going to go to Mills Park Middle, whereas our kids will be going to Alston Ridge, which is a year-round option. Again, as someone earlier mentioned, 
This is a Wake County has now become a diverse county. You know, families from all over the all over the world live here now, and many families prefer to go on vacations. You know, at the same time, and this is really not going to help if we have two different school calendar options. And we talk about stability and proximity. Mills Park is within less than three miles. Mills Park schools are less than three miles away from where we live, and Hortons Creek Elementary is walking distance from where we live. And we are proposing Alston Ridge Elementary and Alston Ridge Middle and West Cary Middle, which is like more than nine miles away, which equates to 45 minutes of commute. So I request you to please reconsider this draft. As a community, we really oppose this. So we would like to have a traditional and a year-round option as our base school options. Thank you so much. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Uh, my name is Ranjit Zoshi, and I'm representing the Town Hall North community over here. As a few of my colleagues have already mentioned, um, we are a community which has recently come up in that uh, neighborhood, and we have been allocated the Cedar Four School uh, for this year. Next year, the options which have been given to us are uh, Powell Elementary, which is a magnet school, which is 23 miles away from our uh, current residence. Uh, my son goes to a first grade uh, school at Sheraf Folk right now. I don't want him to travel uh, one and a half hour every day, one way, and again come back. And uh, that is going to affect his uh, extracurricular activities, which I don't want him to go through. I want him to have a school which is close by. And our request from our community is to have a school which is uh, traditional and which is close by. Uh, so we are requesting that we should have uh, the Parkside Elementary School to be open as a uh, traditional option. Uh, the other options uh, uh, that has been given as Pleasant Groove, which is an application school without the bus service, uh, which is also not acceptable to us. So uh, I request the board to consider our request and uh, give us a better solution in draft three. Uh, thank you very much. I'll now entertain a motion to approve the consent items. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please note by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed, same sign. The motion carries. Thank you. We'll now move to action. First item, academic advancement, 2018-19 instructional calendars, as well as the late start on November 6th. Lloyd Gardner, thank you very much. You're welcome. Good evening, Chair Johnson Hosser, board members, and Superintendent Moore. With the expectations for the higher turner, voter turnout schedule for our upcoming elections, as well as the fact that many of our schools serve as polling sites, we are the staff are recommending opening all of our schools on a two hour delay on November the 6th, 2018, the day the elections are scheduled to occur. Madam Chair, move approval of the request for um, calendar change as listed. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor, please note by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. The motion carries. Thank you. Thank sir. you. Madam Chair, I'd like to make a motion to approve the HR items from closed session. Second. We have a motion and second. All in favor, please note by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. The motion carries. We do. Madam Chair, I would move that we return to closed session for the items previously identified at our, when we <coughs> convened at 4 o'clock this afternoon. And stated on the printed agenda. <laughs> Second. There's one in here. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please note by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed, same sign. The motion carries. We'll now return to closed session. Yeah, I'm assuming it won't matter.